think anyone could present a gospel message, the arrival of the Christ child, any better than what it's going to have to work for us this morning. She will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Christmas is a time of joy. As followers of Jesus Christ, the resounding message in our Christmas celebrations ought to echo with notes of joy, much like the hosts of angels presenting the message to the shepherds that night long, long ago. I bring you good news that will be, bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. You see, the gospel message is about the greatest gift of all time. God gave us Jesus Christ, his son, who brings great joy to everyone who receives him. The purpose of Christmas is to share this gift in and what a perfect opportunity is ours during this special time of year. Christmas is a holiday that focuses upon the person of Jesus Christ, the one who came to save the lost. Knowing that Christmas time is God's chosen time teaches us that Christmas is the time for us to renew our faith, a time for us to experience as this series, The Newness of Christmas, informs us this morning about the new life. I want us to look at three simple phrases that the angels spoke of in their announcement. Fear not. We need not fear God because of the good news of Christ's arrival. It is good news, meant to bring great joy to all people. But what is that good news? I believe it is simply this. You, 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 we all matter to God. God knows everything there is to know about you, about us. The good, the bad, the ugly. And yet, He still loves us. He cares about you. He loves you more than you can ever know. God is for you, not against you. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time He will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Here's something else that God wants us to know. We are not an accident. We are not an accident. Regardless of the circumstances of your birth, you were not the result of an accident. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. The only way you will find meaning and satisfaction is to discover God's purpose for your life today and then to get right into the center of God's will. Christmas is when God says to us, I want to relate to you. I want you to know as much as I know you. That's the joyful news that the angels announced. It's good news. These are familiar verses. Similar, in fact, that it is easy to, to miss just how remarkable they are. Fear not. I bring you good news. A Savior is born. The birth of Jesus is not the way we would have planned it, is it? No person, however poor, should have to be born in a stable. No delivery room. No doctor. Hay on the floor. Animals all around. And the smell. The mess. This is no place for a royal birth. But God sees it differently. He chose a manger over a mansion. He picked a carpenter over a king. 
He designed a quiet coming over a worldwide celebration. Why would God, the creator of heaven and earth, send his son to be born in such a lowly place? Perhaps Jesus, the only son of God, was born in a stable to give hope to all those who, whose lives look like one such person. We sure do make a mess of things at times, don't we? Sometimes our actions really stink. And though we try to make the best of it, the winter wind still sneaks into the corners of our lives and the nights get cold and dark. Fear not, for I bring you good news. In Luke chapter 4, verse 43, Jesus shared these words. I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too because that is why I was sent. Too many days, too far from God, too many years, too hard on others, too much mess. God knows. God knows. And he has some amazing words for us today. I bring you good news. I'll give you great joy. I sent the Savior, Christ the Lord. C.S. Lewis says of Christmas, the whole thing narrows and narrows until at last it comes down to a little point, as small as the point of a spear, a Jewish girl at her prayers. Mary and Joseph, in their simple faith, accepted the good news of Jesus' birth. They demonstrated faith in God's plan. They experienced God's peace. They heard the angelic word of affirmation, a word often repeated in the Christmas story. Do not be afraid. The newness of Christmas informs that Christ would soon come. Think of Christmas for a moment. What are the thoughts that go through your head? The decorated tree? The lights? The music? The childlike feel of the season? The angelic announcement and the birth of Christ? The hardest part about preaching or singing at this particular time of the year, or hearing the story even as adults, is that it no longer affects our senses. It no longer moves our souls to humility. It no longer moves our lips to give praise to God for His grace, His love, and good news. Sometimes I fear we do not give consideration to the real newness of Christmas, the angel's announcement of Christ and salvation to all humankind. Rejoice! Do not be afraid! For I bring you good news, a Savior. The drama of Christmas comes as if God has pulled back a curtain on the world stage and placed a spotlight on Christ born in Bethlehem. What will Christ be? He will be named Jesus, we are told, a reference to salvation. He will be great, an indication of his power. He will possess a kingdom not like the Roman emperors in their grandeur with their golden crowns and the armies with chariots and horses that will one day end, but a kingdom of faith, a kingdom of hope, a kingdom of love that will have no end. Do you ever race through Christmas and lose a sense of wrapping your heart in your mind, around the mystery of Christ? Do you revere Christ as you ought? Do you stand in awe? Our God is an awesome God in His miracle of salvation and in the mystery of His message of hope. The Christ of Christmas invites us to place our faith in Him and watch Him produce within us this spirit of hope. This hope is more than positive thinking. It's more than a good attitude. 
It's more than a good feeling on a warm winter day. It is a hope rooted in Christ's birth, in His death, in His burial, in His resurrection, and His life simply because we choose to believe in Him. Do you really want to know God's answer to the deepest longings of your life? John tells us what it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here we find the answer in the most un unexpected place. Look long at heaven's barn-born baby. He's the only one sleeping in the hay. And listen as, God's, as God whispers, no mess turns me back. No smell turns me away. I was born to live in lives like yours. He knows exactly what you're like, and still he loves you. He simply awaits your invitation to come in. One word from you, and God will do again what he did back then. He'll place his son in the stable, in the stable of your heart. He'll give you the gift of eternal life. In 1941, an American composer by the name of Catherine Kennicott Davis penned the words of this song, Carol of the Drums. We know it today as the Little Drummer Boy. There is no biblical reference to the Little Drummer Boy in its story, but the lyrics the singer relates how as a poor young boy he was summoned by the Magi to the Nativity where without a gift for the infant Jesus, he played his drum with the Virgin Mary's approval, remembering, I played my best for him, and he smiled at me. He smiled at me. Friends, God doesn't care if you have wealth. God doesn't care if you have lots of talent. God doesn't care if you have fame. God only cares that you do the best you can with what you have to honor and glorify him. Walt Whitman wrote about America's teeming intricate world. We in America pride ourselves too much on being busy and cramming our time with stuff. In the whirlwind of Christmas, exhausting in its hectic pace, it would do us good to pause, to hear the rush of angels' wings, to hear God's message as announced afresh. Christ the Savior has come. Years ago, he says, in a church, children's musical in our church, the children were dressed as Mary, as Joseph, as the shepherds, and as the angels, much like our little darlings are this morning. And yet, in one hushed moment, one of the characters recited this line. Stop. Look. Listen for Christmas. Good news, great joy, eternal life. Would you like to receive this gift this Christmas? I pray that as the children continue to relay this story, that that may be your desire. <laughs>